Okay guys, welcome back to this next tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm not gonna show you a lot. Uh, this is the solution here on the screen. Uh, this is the solution of the detailed drawing of the three by two flat wing. And all you'll need to have drawn is of course this three by two flat wing. I think I might've called it uh, chamfer or something like that in a previous lesson. And you're gonna create a drawing um, off that. So just to get you started, um, remember that when you want to create a drawing of a three-dimensional object you open it up first let's go back to home view and then you go file new drawing from design make sure you choose the KCC drawing template and the template will pop up and I'll just tell you that the scale is probably best about four to one and I'll also get you to start by bringing in the top view, which is this view here. Bring the top view in, uh, click OK. Uh, at this point too, though, make sure that you've changed it to hidden detail on the edges. And the first thing I'll get you to do is actually do a section through this top view here. So to do that section, we select the section command, select the view we want to section, and then hover over the uh, center of one of these studs here, you'll see it pre-highlights to green. And if you drag it out to the side, you should get a little uh, line. There it is there. Click once on the left-hand side, then it come across to the right. Make sure it's still got that pre-highlighted green line. Click again, then click the Enter key, and then drag your cursor down, and there is your section of front view. Place it like so. Uh, come over here. Now, a sectional front view will normally not have any hidden detail so we're just going to choose the visible uh, edges option from style everything else can remain the same and click on ok just get rid of this AA here and then we're going to project a side view from there so select that view project select the view there it goes again and make the gap between the top view and the front view about the same distance from the front view to the side view around about there and I'm just going to place this three-dimensional view up here as well, the one there. You can see it's sectioned, uh, but I can change that. So I'll just place it there, hit escape to get out. And if I double click onto that, and you'll see here uh, somewhere inherit cut. If I turn that off, we'll go back to the full size there. And what I will do with this 3D view is just turn it to shaded. And then I'm ready to start doing dimensioning and so on from there. All right, um, the first thing I normally do before I even start dimensioning is put center lines in. So to look down on the top view of anything that's cylindrical or circular, we use this center mark option up here. Click on center mark, click on the largest part of the circle, one, two, and three. And then we want to identify cylinders uh, in other views. So to do the center lines for these other cylinders, we need to choose the function from center mark to center line. Click on center line. I want to zoom in a little bit here and click on the left side and the right side of the cylinder. And you can see it puts the center line in the left side and the right side, the left side and the right side. While I'm at it, I'll do it in the side view as well, left side and the right side. So if that's all the cylinders are now marked with center lines, we can now concentrate on dimensions. Now a general rule is that you do not show where possible dimensions on a sectional view which means we're going to try to avoid putting dimensions on this view, but only on this right side view and the top view. So with that in mind, go to the dimension tab and let's click on this edge here and put in uh, the length. Then let's click on this edge here and put in the, the width. And let's also click on this edge here and put in the distance from corner to corner. And you'll notice that these lines, the dimension lines and the AA lines are now starting to get quite confusing. So jump out of dimension by hitting escape. Uh, select the line AA, which is the sectioning line, and just drag it out past the edge of the dimension line, like so, one and two. And that's good, and that's not confusing. Uh, right, what else should we do in the top view there? Mm, I think we'll turn our attention to the right side view, so back to dimension. We'll put in its height of the base. And then to put in the height of the distance or the height of the stud here, make sure that you select the furthest edge first. Uh, I'll show you why. If I just click on that edge, 
and drag it out you'll see here that there's no gap then between the edge and also the lead line which is quite confusing so when you do put in a dimension that's get out of that one um, from an internal part if you like click on dimension click on the external reference point click on the other external reference point and then just move your mouse around until you get it in the right position remember you can move dimensions after they've been placed so if that was not quite right I jump out of dimension by hitting escape select it and then I can drag you know that to where I want to go to which happened to be in the right spot which is directly in line with the other 3.2 there just notice something too I don't seem to have any hidden detail on this right side view so I'm going to double click on the view make sure the hidden detail is turned on which is visible in hidden edges click on close and let's review now we ask ourselves the question could the manufacturer look at this drawing and make the part? Well, they've got the length, they've got the width. I can see here they've also got the secondary width. They've got the height. They don't have the diameter of these studs. So let's go to dimension. Which stud shall we dimension? Well, I'm going to choose this middle one here. Click once onto it. And I'm going to drag that dimension away. Um, I'm sort of tossing up here whether I keep the dimension inside the drawing or outside the drawing. Generally, you would try to keep the, the dimensions outside, but in this case, I think there's enough space just here, well, maybe even over here, where if we do place that 5 there, it's not going to confuse the reader. So click 5, and if we only dimension this circle once, then there's no need to dimension the other ones as well. Um, if the convention is if a, a circle is dimensioned and the other two around it look the same but they're not dimensioned then it's basically the same they are now rather than doing all these dimensions between the uh, hidden detail lines and so on what we'll do we'll put a note on the sectional view um, that the shell thickness is 1.45 so come up to the text with a leader and uh, go down to the uh, sectional view this is the only uh, information we will put on the sectional view and click on this bottom edge here once and drag your cursor away left or right line to go this way and with the caps lock on we'll type in shell 1.45 and then click close and that will do us we'll escape out of the text oh, there we go I'm get out of it. Fair all right let's have a look we've got the length, the width, the secondary width, the first height, the second height, there's no need to put a auxiliary dimension in there. The shell thickness, we've got the centers of the studs. I suppose we probably do need to put in the position for the centers of the studs. So that's gonna take a little bit of editing. So what I'm gonna do here, uh, I'm gonna show you something wrong and then I'll show you how to fix it. So let's put in the distance from this left hand side here to the center of the stub. So I'm going to click once to the left hand side and then I'm going to move my cursor to the uh, end of that center line and then I'm going to drag it down here like so. Now uh, as far as its positioning is good, there's a gap here, there's also a small gap between there and there, but we've got a problem in that these leader lines of the smaller dimension of the 3.95 are overlapping the larger dimension. So we need to edit that. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of uh, insert uh, dimension and now I can just edit things. So what we actually want, we want the smaller dimensions to be closer to the object and the larger ones to be further away. So I'm going to click on this 23, click on the box in the middle there, drag it down there like so, then go back and select the 3.95 and I'm going to halve the distance between the outline to the first dimension and then an equal distance hopefully again might need to come a little bit further away actually so I'm going to select that bring it down just a fraction and that looks like about the same distance from there to there from there to there so smaller dimensions on the inside larger dimensions on the outside and then I'm going to need to do the same thing over here as well so go back into the dimension tool click on this corner click on the end of that center line drag it out hopefully horizontal there we go I'm just going to place it there for now for argument's sake hit escape to get out of insert and then select the 15.8 drag it out of the road 
Now this might be interesting because it might get in the road of the section line there. So I'm trying to get that distance there and there and there and they're about the same distance away. And then I'm going to set the 15.8 and do about the same there. Okay, let's have a look at that. Um, looking good except for the line AA. Select that. Drag that further out like so. And now we're looking pretty good. All right, so a few conventions to follow there. One was we don't normally put dimensions on sectional views. We also don't show hidden detail on sectional views. We need to show axis lines wherever there is a cylindrical uh, extrusion. And in dimension lines, the smaller dimensions are closer to the object than the larger dimensions. And the line AA for any sectioning must not get confused in amongst any of those dimensions. Only dimension things once. So if there's 3.2 here, there's no need to put it over here, and 1.7 as well. And it doesn't hurt to have this three dimensional view up there, like so. And the scale of the views on the drawing is appropriate. It's not too small, not too big. And you can see here that information is stored down here in the drawing name block. All right, let's export that as a PDF. And we'll see what it looks like. We'll hit OK. I'll just save this into my drive. Make sure you do the same thing. Make sure you're saving it into your engineering drafting uh, folder. I just realized I put that in grade 11, put this in grade 12. Practical demonstration 2020. And I'm going to call this one uh, chamfer drawing, even though it's a different name there. And hopefully it will open up in our PDF viewer. There we go. Looks slightly different because now the PDF viewer has actually applied the correct line weights to everything. And this is where you go back over and make sure that things like gaps between um, dimension lines are there, between there and the outline. Make sure that the line A is clearly visible. The rest of it looks pretty good. All right, so uh, make sure you apply those rules to all of your detailed drawings and you should do well.